Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Bolt Action Reloading. In today's video, we're going to start working up a match load for our 6mm Creedmoor Ruger Precision Rifle. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of you here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you get notified when I post next week's video and you won't miss anything. Welcome back. If you're a regular here, you're going to know that we've done a lot of 300 Winchester Magnum lately. And though we've had some success in there, it's time to move to another platform where hopefully we'll find a little bit easier reloading process. At least that's what we're hoping for today. If you're not familiar with this project rifle, we'll go over it real quick. This is a Ruger Precision Rifle Generation 2, chamber in 6mm Creedmoor. It is wearing a Vortex Razor Gen 2, 4.5 to 27, that's mounted in a spur mount. This is our factory Ruger brake. Though we do have an Atlas bipod on the rifle here that, that wasn't used when we were shooting. You'll see in the shooting video here in a minute the actual rest that we were using to shoot our rifle today. If you've seen some of the earlier testing we've done on the channel, we've actually had some spectacular luck getting some very good groups right out of the gate out of our 105 grain Hornady as well as our 105 grain Burger projectiles. Stumbled on some pretty good loads that were very usable right out of the gate. Since we already shot some 105 grain black ammunition, I had picked up another box of this 108 grain Hornady match ammunition, as well as some 108 grain projectiles to try out here on the channel. I actually haven't shot any of this match ammunition yet, so I didn't know what exactly to expect, but I thought I would use it to kind of set up the dimensions on our first reloads in Hornady brass. The 20 pieces of Hornady brass were actually from the other factory black ammunition that we've shot previously, just to generate a pressure velocity curve so we could see how the rifle is generally going to shoot see kind of what our expectations can possibly be should we start working up a load with this particular combination. Reloader 26 might seem slightly unusual for today's testing, but I do have good reason. I've seen a little bit of comments online. I've been, a couple people have reached out to me and Reloader 26, even though there's no load data, seems to be performing well for others in this caliber. Although we had no load data, it was certainly made me nervous to try out. However, all the information about our components is actually in quick load. Quick load is how we generated our test today. This load is not any book that I've found so far, though somewhere down the line somebody might very well add it. Now, unlike our 300 Winchester Magnum, this, act, this rifle actually has a relatively short throat. Typically 2.80 is the cartridge overall length that you're going to find as the loading length today. Um, we chose 2.794 with a CBTO of 2.227 inches. Like I said, having a fairly short throat, we didn't want to shove it into the lands, cause any unusual pressure spikes in our testing today. We basically just wanted to do a little bit of testing, see where we, if we found any pressure signs that were unsafe to make sure we didn't load a whole bunch of bullets that we were going to have to pull later. Though I will warn you, for those of you that aren't really excited about pressure velocity curves, it's going to be a good video. I'm cheating, I already know the results. So basically going over our test for today, we're going to be testing uh, starting at 43.2 grains of Reloader 26 and testing all the way to 47.0 grains of Reloader 26 in 0.2 grain increments. We are going to shoot all 20. I'm going to tell you that the guy goofed and missed the first shots. We don't know the velocity of our 43.2 grain charge, but we do know the rest of the velocities in today's testing. The components we used around the table is obviously Alliance for Loader 26 was the powder we chose. These are just regular Fed 210 primers. I have used this lot previously with some other 6.5 millimeter Creedmoor reloading that I did and had relatively reasonable results with achieving, you know, high singles digit standard deviations. When we got down to fine tuning our load, we might switch primers. However, we were just looking to make sure we didn't hit any pressure. We're just learning with this powder. And even though quick load said it was safe, we didn't want to do anything crazy pushing our load today. In fact, the quick load at 37 grains, our estimate of velocity we were going to hit was 3101 feet per second at a pressure of 57,270 PSI. Well below our max pressure and with our expectations, all safe loads. Obviously checking for pressure as we shot all the loads, so we didn't do anything too foolish. Being that this is the 108 grain match ammunition, our projectile for today is the Horny part number 24561. This is the 108 grain ELD match in what is used in our factory ammunition. I know that we've had reasonable results again with the Hornady Match Ammunition and 6.5 Creedmoor, so I thought it'd be great to give it a try. Developing our pressure velocity curve isn't something I really would usually do before we'd shot some of our factory ammunition, but I did have some old factory brass to start with to see what we can do right out of the gate and compare with what we might get. Now, our box ammunition is actually estimated at 2960 feet per second. Maxing out at 3101 with a Reloader 26 would certainly be a velocity improvement, but certainly not if we didn't get any good groups. Nothing really special about this load test. Again, mostly safe pressure and velocity is what we're looking for, but let's go out to the range and actually see how this performs.
Well, welcome back from the range, guys. I hope that you're half as impressed as I am. This was a great day at the range for me, and certainly a nice change from struggling with our 300 Winchester Magnum. In case you hadn't already measured on your screen, our overall group that we achieved today over our 20 rounds was 0.796 MOA. And we actually ranged in velocity all the way from, again, we missed our first shot, but at 43.4 grains, we were at 29.30 feet per second, so slightly below our box estimated value. Our target was 3101, but we actually went all the way up to 3240 feet per second, significantly over what we actually expected to achieve today. Though, I'm certainly not bragging. Again, that's why we test and say where safe actually is. Another note that's on here is I was finishing up one of my lots of Reloader 26 for this test and did switch lots, probably not the best idea in the middle of our test. The data between 75.2 and 75.4 grains was actually switching to a different lot of powder. You'll notice a reasonable velocity jump from 45.2 to 45.4 grains. Some of that might be a slight addition of powder, but I do think there's a slight lot to lot variation, jumping up basically 70 feet per second in that 0.2 grain differential. You'll see moving up in 0.2 grains, we didn't see anything near that significant anywhere else. So I'm sure the lot change was quite a factor inside that and why we need to test every single lot of powder as we start using it, even if we have known loads. Actually maxing out at that 3240 feet per second today, quick load is going to estimate that to achieve that velocity, we were somewhere around 70,812 PSI. Not where I would recommend shooting. Not sure we're going to have the pressure signs to justify that decision. We're all responsible for our own loading decisions, so if you decide to load that high with this projectile, I guess that's up to you. I wasn't going to have quick load actually go and estimate all of the particular uh, node times for you for this particular chart, but in case you're interested, somewhere around that 44.4 grains is where we might hit that 1.228 velocity node. According to some of our barrel time theories, low 20 rounds into basically three quarters of an MOA covering a velocity spread of over 300 feet per second. I'm not sure there's a bad load in there as far as the groups are concerned. Take that information for what you will. Uh, let's look at the pressure signs. We'll put the brass on the screen and you'll see starting off at 43.2 grains, you're really going to see no pressure signs at all. Really no even signs of pressure cratering at that charge weight. But again, quick load is essentially estimating that that pressure is actually slightly below 50,000 PSI. We wouldn't really expect to see significant pressure signs in this cartridge at that pressure. Now, as we go up, you're going to start seeing a little bit of primer cratering. And if we were using small rifle brass, we would probably see more primer cratering because of the small rifle primers, but this is large rifle primer brass. And we can see as we're increasing that pressure charge all the way up to the top that we are getting a little bit more primer cratering. Nothing else really significant on the brass. No real even ejector marks to, to complain about, but how you guys choose to load is completely up to you. Let's go back to our chart for a minute. And one thing I am interested in is where you guys actually think would be an interesting place to load. Looking somewhere around that 44.4 grain mark would be optimal barrel time. However, slightly below that around the 2980 feet per second, which is very close to the box velocity. Looks like we have a reasonable node down at 43.8 all the way to 44.2 grains. Only an extreme spread of six on those rounds all the way across. And honestly, I'm not sure there's as good of a flat spot until we bump up all the way to the 46.2 to 46.6 grain mark at 3200 feet per second. We may have missed a node somewhere around the 45.2 grain mark by switching lots of powders. We might have to go back and relook at that if we found something interesting in that arena. I'm really not inclined to go all the way up to the you know 46.2 grains again, even though we really didn't have any pressure signs. And it looks very likely there could be a node somewhere in that range. Being well over pressure in this cartridge, it really isn't buying me anything for what I'm looking for out of this particular cartridge. And as well as this barrel is shooting, I'm really not interested in prematurely wearing it out. I've heard lots of information out there on all sides of the spectrum. Some people claiming changing the barrel after 800 rounds. I'm certainly hoping to not have to do it that. Our accuracy seems to be pretty good. I'm hoping not to have to change it after 800 rounds, but getting 2000 rounds out of it might be a long stretch as well. Whatever, when I work this up the next time, I'd really be interested to know what you guys think in the comments section below. Even if you're not interested in reloading for 6mm Creedmoor, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments section below. If you like the content here on the channel, you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so you get notified when I post next week's video. I hope to see you back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.